I have a motion to reconvene the meeting. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Mrs. Dichara. Yes. Mrs. Mika. Yes. Mr. Spondoria. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Yes. Mrs. Dye. Yes. Uh, well, we're back. Thank you, Mr. Schoner, for filling in. You're I completely welcome. appreciate that. I heard you did a fantastic job. That's what I've been told. Okay. We'll see. Nice job. I'll try not to let it happen more. Often. Don't let it happen again. <laughs> All right. All righty. Moving on, we have our high school representative. I'm going to let her go first. We have Francesca Catrone. Hello. How welcome. Are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You're welcome. So the way we normally do this, when you come, we let you speak first during the whole committee report thing, and you just kind of talk about whatever you have prepared, and then. Obviously, I know sometimes you might be crazy busy, so if you need to leave right away, that's totally fine. You can go, or you can stay during the entire meeting. So, whatever you want to do. I think I'm good to stay. All, All right. Oh, I just wanted to, you know, so you're not having a heart attack. You might have a test tomorrow, and you're like, <laughs> you know, yeah. we're going on and we're bantering, so, okay. Aww. All right, so go ahead. Great, well, I have the September and October monthly report from Cedar Grove High School. Um, on September 13th, Gino Tool from Connections 101 came to the high school to give a presentation to our seniors on scholarship strategies. On September 19th uh, was our annual back to school night at the high school. September 20th was CGHS's massive club day sign up. All students were able to sign up for the clubs and activities they were looking to participate in for this upcoming school year. On September 23rd was CGHS's application and financial aid night. Our guidance counselors did an hour-long presentation about the college application process, followed by a financial aid pr presentation by Ed Zamora. On behalf of the senior class, I believe the presentation was quite helpful in guiding us through the common application and college application process. On October 1st, 25 students took the ACT offered at the high school. On October 2nd, Ava Silverman, Gina Grimes, and I went to a student summit event at James Caldwell High School representing Cedar Grove High School's all school council. This past Saturday, October 5th, Music Matters had its annual car wash and bake sale, as well as Talent Under the Stars, hosted by Jesse Fearon in the high school auditorium. On October 14th, the Cedar Grove School District will be having an early dismissal for professional staff development. On Wednesday, October 16th, grades 9, 10, and 11 will be taking the PSATs. On October 23rd is the annual Dig Pink Volleyball Game against Verona at 7 p.m. at Cedar Grove High School with all proceeds going towards breast cancer awareness. I'm going to interrupt you again. What date was that, the, the pink the volleyball? Um, that is October 23rd. You won't be here for the Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. <coughs> and on October 24th, Tim Showmaker will be giving a vaping presentation at the high school titled Save Your Breath from 10 to 11 a.m. for freshmen and sophomores and 12 to 1 p.m. for juniors and seniors. The Cedar Grove Music Department is working on their drama production, The, the Brothers Grimm Spectaculathon, and has recently announced their upcoming spring musical, Peter Pan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank very you. nice. Thank you. Peter Pan. Yes. We're always the last to know. <laughs> I love it. It's good. It's all good. It's all good. Actually, actually I heard a couple of days ago. No, I know. I, I know that we like to keep, you know, the anticipation. Right. So I, I'm just busting about the anticipation. Okay. Are you excited? I'm excited. Fantastic. I okay. want to see how they're doing the flying. I know people who are very interested in being certified. A little, a little, in the little rigging. Aspect. A little rigging. Absolutely. Maybe a drone in the auditorium. You think? Yeah, that's reflecting up Peter Pansies. Oh, look at that. Tinkerbell? Oh. Tinkerbell could be a drone. Could be the drone. Could be the drone. Absolutely. And we have a STEM program in the high school and in the middle school. And they our insurance carrier. Right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I like that. Or we could just do some sort of string thing going along with a drone on it. Maybe. Mm. Or just like a little cardboard Tinkerbell and hope for the best. Uh, no, sure. no. This is Cedar Grove. There is no cardboard Tinkerbell. <laughs> <laughs> we've never had, we've never gone light on the musicals. No, never, we ever, don't. ever. We go big. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. Great. Committee reports. Anyone? Anybody go anywhere? Do anything? All right. No. What did I do? Yeah, no, no, no. You went to a rec board I meeting. went to a rec board <laughs> meeting. I did. Good Lord. Um, and actually, I think it was we, I announced the same at the last time. I announced all the, because I don't have them with me today, but all of the um, upcoming events. So October 17th, uh, Real Panthers Wear Pink at um, Panther Park. Um, the music, uh, the, the okay. movie, I forget There's the date. I There's a movie that. night. Um, uh, sorry, I didn't bring my documents. I'm unprepared. It's all good. <laughs> 
Good things happening, though. Project graduation is um, hard at work fundraising. They're doing a, um, a hat and scarf sale, but they'll also be doing some um, family dinner nights. And then the, their big fundraiser is in November. Wait for it. Hmm? Hatchet throwing. Really? There's no way that's <laughs> clearing security. Have you done that before? <laughs> I've done yeah. it. Oh my gosh, it's so much it's fun. It's very <laughs> secure and safe. It, it's great. So I think everybody should join on in on the hatchet. Absolutely. Uh, teams? Other teams? Fun night. <laughs> well, we could probably do it many ways. We could. Yeah. Yeah, you could I like teams. We're doing it off-site, right? Off-site. It's all equipment in the gym. Huh? Is that wrong? No. Yes, off-site. <laughs> <laughs> Just check. Yes, off-site. Don't you worry. Right. Yes, yeah, there's no way. <laughs> I mean, where's Gogarty? He would not be happy here. In, um, uh, well, that's exciting. That's good, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, we should, we should be a team. team. And that's different. We different. should do a team. It's good. Different. Oh, absolutely. I think we do a team. We need yeah. to do a team. Yeah, we need to do a team. All right, I get the information. What date? How can you throw? Do you throw well, though? Okay. What? Do you throw well? Oh, I'm an archery in, in college. She's I was number one. Bullseye shown her. All right, just double checking. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you there laughing, you go. Mike? Why are you laughing, Mike? Bullseye shown her? What's that? Bullseye shown her. That's fantastic. Should we digress? Absolutely. Yeah. And that is now on TV. It is. Yeah. It's right. It's, uh, I'm proud of it. Dave's got There's a new name. There's video somewhere. <laughs> there is now. There is now. Alrighty. Moving on. Please. <laughs> and, uh, from a All right. Nothing. Nothing for me. Uh, do you fantastic. believe that the uh, banners for the um, yes two soccer teams have been? That, that's what I was going to ask you to mention, if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, you mind mentioning about, mention about the soccer, about the boys and the girls? I don't want to mention. I don't want to steal anyone's thunder. Oh. Well, he wasn't going to mention it, so go ahead. Yeah. Oh. The boys won. Yeah, go ahead. What am I the, supposed to say? Well, Whatever. the conference. Well, the boys. Uh, is, that, is that right? The boys and the girls both We're, had. Yeah. They won something. I don't know what it is. I don't Conference, officially I know yet. I, I haven't gotten up to the official. Well, number. I know the girls yeah. this evening won their first game in the county yeah. tournament. That uh, I can tell you. Know. And that we was exciting. There. I was there, and it was double Fabulous. overtime, and it ended with penalty, penalty kicks. kicks, and our kickers were awesome, and our goalie was fantastic, and it was a great time. But both, so both boys and girls, both boys and girls soccer, soccer team soccer. really did re Perfect. fantastically yeah. well this year. Yeah. 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 So, and uh, senior nights are coming up for the different sports too. So right. That's stuff coming out soon. Exciting. That's all I got. We will have them up. here, assuming they are county or okay. <laughs> right. conference champs or something. Okay. We'll certainly have them here, recognize. Oh, them. when you recognize them, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Handshakes and all that. If that's the case. We'll right. Right. I, I just don't know. I don't know if it's conference or yeah. the boys. The boys soccer won conference. We'll have them here. I'm not that good. I can just attest that. We'll let you know as soon as we that's get That's what I can tell you. That's what I know. Let's really move on now. Okay. Board presentations. Uh, yeah. We have the Cedar Grove High School Music and Drama Trip to Ireland, and Ms. Justin is here to talk to us about that. Hello. Hello. Go right ahead. I don't have a projection. Okay. Have copies okay. Okay. So hopefully. Do you have a copy? No. no. We had them electronically. Oh, electronically. Yeah, okay. Electronic, yeah, I was yeah. just trying to electronic. save paper. Mm -hmm. um, so, if you hopefully you had a chance to breeze through the mm -hmm. itinerary, you notice it just says AM, PM, and um, I had put in the field trip request uh, June 21st through the 29th, um, mainly because of project graduation, right? That we have graduation on the 19th, and then they that night it's like an all you know, like events. So I wouldn't want them to miss that or um, be really, really exhausted um, on a flight. But um, that's what I'm working with um, Bob Rogers Travel, which, by the way, is different from what the Globetrotters uh, traditionally use, which is EF Tours. Um, EF Tours doesn't specialize in music. And I thought it was time once again, it's been since 2012 that I took a music trip abroad. And yes, this will focus on bringing music students, but we're opening it up so that we get numbers. Um, the music trip, you know, uh, to Florida, March 27th through the 30th, um, right now, is expensive. And so, but I didn't realize that there are several students that didn't go on the Globetrotter trips and have been saving to um, eventually go on one. Um, so, and Globetrotters also that were maybe expecting 
an April trip, but there's also an Italian trip. So right. th those are some of the reasons why um, I'm proposing this tour. So Bob Rogers Travel, I learned about through the American Choral Directors Association, and so they're affiliated with, uh, you know, national music <coughs> groups, and they specialize in setting up musical experiences that also non-music department trip members, and I'm looking at <coughs> Mrs. Dye, <laughs> because Ellie has already shown interest and um, registered on my interest link. Um, so they specialize in things like on the first or second day on the itinerary where they would participate in a master class with a musician, a local musician. It could be instrumental, it could be vocal. So that's one experience. And then performing in a joint concert with the Killarney School of Music, mm -hmm. which is something that they traditionally do <coughs> with the I Ireland tour. And it's nice because then we share music also. We would send music that we would want to do with them and vice versa. And then of course all their traditional Irish tourism. Mm. And we would probably do impromptu performances at acoustic places, which would be lovely. And then our own music department uh, evening concert that they would set up. And what they do is they ask for uh, flyers or a picture of our group and then they put up posters and promote it so that local community members are going. It could possibly be in a school auditorium, it could be in a church. In 2012 that's what we did, we performed in schools and churches and um, it was lovely and got to meet lots of other students. Um, there's what's included on the tour. We have our airfare of course and a complimentary um, checked bag. Seven nights accommodations at four star hotels. That's what, why it's expensive, a little different from EF. Um, breakfast at our hotels, dinners at local restaurants or hotel, according to where we are each day. Admission to all of our tourism and excursions. Our performances and promotion of the performances, like I was saying, the flyers and whatever picture we provide them. Um, it's nice to go to a foreign country and all of a sudden, you know, when we walk in to warm up, see our poster hanging there um, for the free performance. There's an individual payment plan that's all online so I don't have to deal with collecting checks. We have an Irish tour manager for the whole tour. Um, passport, <laughs> wallets, luggage, tags, gratuities included in our package, which is also different from EF. Mm -hmm. Um, a tracking and messaging app, and travel insured post-departure, travel protection plan, and a company representative for our airport check-in at Newark. And there's double price, single price for numbers. So I'm hoping that if this first approval goes through and I can send out a link, you know, to have interest, like Mrs. Dye did, maybe could share how you did that, um, then I can hopefully get 30 and uh, move forward. If there's not enough interest, of course, you know, we won't be able to go. So, <laughs> any questions? <coughs> Where do I sign? Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, I'd like to open it no. up, you know? Um, Sounds like a great trip. So that's something to think about. It is in the summer, and um, it can be run through, you know, Music Matters, and um, we could also have something called Companion Tour, which is a separate itinerary, separate hotels, and um, they would be able to come to all of our music performances. Really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Right? In Ireland? Mm. So, something to think about. Wow. Very nice. Thank yeah, you. I know. Well, I mean, I like the the idea that it's in the summer because yeah. it definitely opens it up. I mean, I know the sports, with sports, you know, you don't, you don't right? Get with the, right. <coughs> and that's one of the challenges is you know you can't really miss the you know games during no, spring no. break. So this definitely provides an alternative, which is nice. <coughs> Thanks. <coughs> Thank you. I really you. appreciate Thank it. You. Yeah, and the sign up process was yeah, easy. You, you put your information in. It's actually easier than EF tours. I didn't have to have the passport or any of that information just to sign up. And you know that'll come, but with EF tours, you have to have everything kind of there right away, and you put your credit card in, and it's only charged obviously if they get the number. Yeah. Yep. Oh. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just I, I went ahead and did that to see if there would be interest. So yeah, it was easy. Well, 
Wow. Thank you. That's great. You. Good luck. I Thank hope you, you get the numbers. Yes. Thank you. That's right. Don't worry about it. Well, that was the fun part it. of the yeah. board presentations. No <laughs> I think offense. You're fine. So now, our annual goal setting and ethics training. You know what? We think it's going to be more fun because you're leading it this year. Yes. So we haven't we haven't seen you. I think in a couple years, years doing this. Right? Yes. And I'm back. So um, let's talk a little bit about the ethics training part. Of it as, um, for the members of the public who are here, the uh, Board of Education is obligated on an annual basis to do ethics training. So uh, in an effort to do that, uh, we come and present the ethics training for the board. So we try to make this really easy. Um, I try to remember what I learned in the third grade that you should be able to learn everything on one hand and you should, be able to, you should be able to point to each of your fingers to remember all of the things. So we're going to look at ethics from a third grade view of the five C's that deal with ethics theories. And the first of those C's is the theory of commitment. That the fact that when you get elected to the Board of Education and you accept your oath of office, you agree that you will be committed to following New Jersey statute. Uh, 18A happens to be the statute that covers education. New Jersey Code, 6A happens to be the code that covers, new, that covers public education. Board policy, which is probably online and is revised and looked at by your policy committee. And the case law that interprets statute code and your board policy. So your first piece is that you're going to keep, commit yourself, and, this, and of course the code of ethics, that you're going to commit yourself to following those things. The second of the five C's is the one that really got uh, it gets the most uh, press, and that is the fact that you agree to maintain the confidentiality of the information that you receive, either about students or about personnel, so that you don't have the ability, when you go out into the public and you go to a soccer game, or you go to the shop right, or you go to, um, to a uh, football game, you don't have the ability when someone comes to you and says, you know what, I want to talk to you about so-and-so, a teacher at the high school. You have the ability and the requirement there to say, no, you need to talk to the high school principal about that person, or you need to talk to the superintendent about that person. But your obligation is to maintain the confidentiality of that information. And it's the same information about students. We learn about students in a private session uh, of the Board of Education when there's a student issue that comes to us. We may learn about it because there's a, a student has a particular issue that the Board of Education has to make a determination on. That information is also private. It's confidential and private under the ethics rules, it's also confidential and private under the federal law, uh, FERPA, the Family Educational Family Education Rights Protection Act, or Privacy Act, rather, excuse me. So those two things uh, really form the basis of the confidentiality piece. And certainly we have confidentiality with respect to other things, contract negotiations with labor unions, contract negotiations on things that we may purchase or sell. But so the second of the five C's is confidentiality. And it really is the one, particularly at certain times of the year, and certain times of the week where you run the members of the public, information is power. They're looking to get that information also. You have an obligation to keep it confidential. The third of the five C's is um, chain of command. That when you've taken your commitment to abide by the ethics rules, you've also agreed to follow the chain of command. And that is, as board members, when something's brought to your attention about a staff member or about a, st uh, or about a student, that you turn that over to the building principal, you direct them to the building principal, you direct them back to the teacher, you direct them back to the superintendent of schools. It's not your role to be an advocate on behalf, and it's, it's really unethical for you to be an advocate on behalf of parents or to be on, an advocate on behalf of, of some community group, but you have an obligation to say to them, the chain of command is that you take that to the superintendent of schools. The chain of command is you take that to the building principal. If you don't know, you take that to the superintendent of schools who determines who's appropriate in the chain of command. As board members, on board issues, you take them to the, to the president of the board. So you agree under the third C to follow the chain of command, clearly, def clearly defined in that any issue dealing with a student, a staff member, and uh, any kind of operation in the school goes to the superintendent or to who the superintendent directs. If you know a building principal, it goes to the building principal. And with respect to board issues, policy issues that comes to the president of the board. And the president of the board makes the determination as to where that goes. Third C, chain of command. I've lost no one yet so far. I'm very excited about this. Yeah. We have two more Cs left. Uh, one of the ones that we're seeing the most activity with most recently, while confidentiality is the most popular one in terms of issues, the one that we're seeing a spike on is conflicts. And that is that you can't act 
that is in conflict with the operation of the Board of Education. So we're going to do it a little differently this time. I'm going to put a little question and answer, too, because I know Michael's asked me to up my game a little bit. Mm. So there was a recent ethics decision, very, very extensive ethics decision, about whether or not a board member can accept donations and whether or not if a board member does accept donations, does that place any kind of limitations on the board member so the board member doesn't act in conflict with the Board of Education? So the easy question is, can board members take financial donations? That answer is yes, you can take a financial donation. However, once you've taken that financial donation, in order not to be in conflict with the Board of Education, if that group that has given you the financial contribution, so if the Football Boosters Club gives you a financial contribution as a booster club, issues come before you with respect to equipment, with respect to program, with respect to the football, anything about football, you need to recuse yourself. You need to separate yourself out from that discussion. So that recusal could either be separating yourself out from the room when that discussion takes place, or when that discussion place, say, takes place sitting silently and not participating. The glamorous one that we hear about all the time is the fact that the N New Jersey Education Association's pride group, that's one, of their, that's one of their fundraising groups, donates all the time to Board of Education members. In some districts, they will run um, candidates' nights, and they'll pick a candidate, and they'll donate $1,500, they'll donate, donate I, I have a candidate in Union County to donate $5,000 to. If you take money from the NJEA or from PSA, the Principal Supervisors Group, or from the local 68 of the Teamsters or whoever it might be, and their negotiations comes up in your district, not only must you recuse yourself, but you can't vote. So the Ethics Commission has taken a look at this both from parent groups and from outside organizations uh, that have do business with the school, of ed with the school, the union groups and stuff like that. So um, you have the ability, you, you lose a little bit of your First Amendment right to free speech away from the board table under the conflicts rule. Okay? You have the ability, when, we're const when we are constituted as a board, you have the ability to state whatever you believe is your correct position. And you can be in conflict. The whole Board of Education says, we're moving, we're moving the board meeting to Thursday, and you want to move it to Tuesday. You can say all you want about moving to Tuesday. Once they vote to move it to Thursday, the board meeting is on Thursday. And you don't have the ability then to argue against why it should be on Thursday. Um, we see this most with referendum. The board it decides to, not your board, but a board decides to have a referendum for a construction project, and the referendum gets voted uh, four to one, three to two, you know, four three on a seven member board or six three on a nine member board. Those, the minority, the minority that voted no, doesn't have the ability to step out and campaign against the referendum. If they campaign against the referendum that's in conflict with the board, the board has taken an action by a, by a vote of the Board of Education at a regular board meeting, and that, that arguing against it exposes the board member to an ethics violation. So conflicts is both from taking, taking um, support when they run for board. Uh, conflict is also if, if you have a program that comes up for your child and, and, and you have a question or it appears that there might be a question about your ability to be impartial, not that you couldn't be impartial, but the public might deem, hey, your child is in that organization and you're voting to move that forward. You recuse yourself by not having that conversation, by staying out of the conversation. The last of the five C's, look at that, we got through all four of them, Michael, and you're smiling at me because you know I upped my game this time. The last of the five C's is claims. As a board member, you cannot take money uh, as a board member from the board. Uh, you, you, you can't have a claim against the Board of Education. So should your child, I had this happen in, in one of my districts in Somerset County, uh, child, their, uh, the board member's child got injured in the playground, uh, serious enough that they were injured, not so serious enough that they missed a lot of school or, or had any kind of uh, life altering injury, but the board member decided that he would file a lawsuit and, and for the broken arm would collect some compensation for his son. When he did that, he had to leave the board. You can't have a claim against the Board of Education that will bring you money and or some benefit to your child that some other child would not have. But they've stretched that a little bit. So if your child has, is, um, wants to be in the gifted and talented program, and that decision somehow comes in front of the Board of Education with respect to the enrollment in the gifted talent program, you have to step away from that, okay? Because that's arguably a claim against the Board of Education. So whether it's a lawsuit, whether it's trying to, we don't, we don't have a situation anymore where you can collect money as a board member, uh, we had a time in New Jersey where you could get a credit card as a board member. 
You could get a car service as a board member. There are boards of education that were extending health benefits to board members. All that has been taken away by statute. Can now it's simply that, that again that we don't get anything as board members. Yeah, you don't get anything Nothing. as board members. Yeah. You 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 get the ability to come here. The chairs are not really hard because I notice these chairs are a little That's bit harder. <laughs> but yes, you get no money. Uh, you get no other benefit except from getting the opportunity to spend time um, with your superintendent, your business administrator, twice a month uh, at these meetings. And that makes it all worthwhile. And that makes it that makes it all <laughs> worthwhile. So as I continue down my little question and answer on the ethics piece. Um, so you're a bus driver in a bus company that does business with the Board of Education. Can you run for the Board of Education and, and get elected and, and accept your oath of office as a board member if you work for the bus company that um, provides busing service to the Board of Education? What do you think? No, you can't take money from the board. Well, you can't take money from the board. So if you are the bus driver in the bus company, you could be, uh, you could be, you could be on the Board of Education. However, if you own the insurance company that provides insurance to the Board of Education, and you're an owner in that company, and you get more than $2,000 in your ownership, you cannot be on the Board of Education. So there's a difference between being an employee and being an owner. If you're an owner and you, get the, you directly benefit, and they make the decision at $2,000, you directly benefit from it, then you cannot be on the Board of Education. But as an employee, you can make whatever salary you make, but because you are an employee and not an owner, you can be a member of the Board of Education. Um, I, I, one just went through my head, but um, um, if you are, um, well, if you had the situation where a member of the high school decided to run for the Board of Education, providing the member of the high school is 18. Remember, the requirements for being on the Board of Education are you have to be 18 years of age, you have to be able to read and write English. Read and write English. You have to be, uh, you can't be disqualified as a voter. And you have to be a resident of the town for at least a year. So we have an 18-year-old who runs for the Board of Education. Under, that, under those criteria, does the 18-year-old get gets elected? Does, is the 18-year-old eligible to accept the oath of office? 18-year-old is. Is the 18-year-old precluded from any portions of board business? Want to take a shot? What do you think? I'm kind of getting in the cold. Yes, yes, yeah. So the yeah, so so, so yeah. all the negotiations, yeah. all the personnel evaluations mm -hmm. of all the uh, all yeah. the teachers, whether that teacher supervises him or her or not. Is there somebody who's 18 who's running locally? Somewhere? Um, there are people who are 18 running in Milburn. Uh, there is someone who's 18 who's on the board in Roselle Park. Maybe it was uh, there is someone who's 18 who's on the board in River Edge. Um, I'm not sure where else, but there are people who are 18 and running. And, and on average from our districts, the ones I represent, we see about 10% of them have, 12% of them, 15% of them have what, somebody who's 18, high school student. And that person sits, you know, participates, but there are certain things that they're not, they're not permitted to participate. Just like um, if you had a conflict because you had a member of the NJA, you couldn't provide them negotiations. Here it's because the, the, the student, it's a student in the high school. Um, If you fail to complete your financial disclosure statement, while you don't get any money from the Board of Education, yeah, you, have to do it, yeah. you have to complete a financial disclosure statement which says where you get the money from. If you fail to complete the financial disclosure statement, <coughs> does that in any way suspend you from your activity as a Board of Education member? I know if I ask Michael this question, Michael would know the answer because he's the, he's the custodian of these records. If you fail to complete that, you're suspended from the Board of Education. And if you put misinformation or leave something off, and it's intentional, and they can prove that it's intentional, they being the Ethics Commission, they will suspend you for six months from the Board of Education. Yeah. So as long as you are receiving two, two th at least, you don't have to tell them how much, but as long as you're re receiving at least $2,000 from any source, um, um, you know, certainly outside the Board of Education, that has to be included on your ethics form, and you have to file the ethics form. So um, five C's, confidentiality, Commitment, confidentiality, chain of command, claims, conflicts. Those are the five pillars of the School Ethics Commission. You agree to follow law, code. Code is regulations that go with the law. Code comes out of the Department of Education. Statute, regulate, stat, statute comes out of the legislature. Your board policy and the decisions that interpret that. 
Not so bad. Got it done. Kept everybody awake. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that is our ethics review. We are now doing goal setting. Do you need to stretch because we're, we're, <laughs> we're transitioning? No, we're good. Okay. Good. So, um, two things. Michael, you have last year's? Yeah, goal? everybody has a copy. Yep. So, um, not to be outdone. So you have two pieces of paper in front of you. Michael provided you with copies of your goals from last year. Mm -hmm. And I provided you with a list of um, a list of topics that you have to think about when you, or you should think about, don't have to think about anything, that you should think about when you design your goals. So if we want to first and it's interesting, my number one was, was look at prior year's goals. So Michael's provided us with the four goals that we designed from last year, or that you designed from last year, because I don't think I was a part of it last year. Um, is there anything on those four that we need to continue this year uh, for a second year on a goal? Well, definitely finances. I think that's one that we, we have every year. Maybe try to pride ourselves on being fiscally responsible. Yes. So last year, the goal was maintaining fiscal responsibility while identifying and pursuing additional revenue sources for the district, including but not limited to signage on district property and the Cedar Grove Education Foundation. Do we want to continue that goal this year just the way it is? Uh, uh, or do we want to modify it? Or do we want to come up with some other financial, financial goal that works for us? Well, you know, well, we've done this on, in several levels of the um, finding different revenue sources, whether it is uh, we've had dance competitions at the high school when the auditorium is not being used. We've had filmmaking um, in the schools when to raise additional money. So we're, we're, I think we're going to leave it. Maybe I don't know if anyone wants to add anything additional to it, but definitely well, what you've just said actually expands it a little bit. Okay. So we're going to expand it at least with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, because that would expand a little bit under the pursuing additional revenue sources for the district. Because that's what we've been doing. Agreed. Um, with respect to uh, your long range, your long range strategic plan. Well, now we're in, yeah. instead of planning, now we're into implementing. Yeah. yeah. That's right. So is that a, a is implementation a, a board goal? Uh, sure. Implementation would be the board directing the implementation of the strategic plan. The implementers would be would be the superintendent okay. and the business administrator right. and anybody else, but the board would be, in a sense, the, the directors on the implementation. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So we could take the board goal from last year's assessment and evaluation and move it into implementation. Okay. Yep. The third one from last year was um, the referendum, which would which would kind of roll into one of the, the topics we have, or two of the topics we have here, which are technology and facilities. Do we have something utilizing those three ideas? Can you repeat the question? <laughs> yes, I can repeat the question. You're going to stay after Michael for not for not paying attention. <laughs> he was being interrupted by the board president. Okay. So you had uh, last year's one of last year's goals was 
uh, the board's referendum. And two of the topics that I put on our topics for us to consider were technology and facilities. Yeah. So if we looked at those globally together, do we have a goal for this year, something we've talked about, the board has talked about, or that the administration has talked about moving forward this year with respect to facilities or technology um, or a potential referendum or the end of a referendum? In terms of technology, I mean, I think we, Every year we try to add something else, you know, at the high school to further our technology program. For sure. And okay. we've rolled out our one-to-one -one initiative. Right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Right. One of our district goals. Right. It's plenty to do with technology. Right. Could we do, could we evaluate what the next step is or what we could do to the high school or el elsewhere, really, not just limited to the high school as far as technology and, you know, we have these, these courses and, you know, where do we go from there type situation? You got that right. Yep. Yeah. Yes, I actually got that. Um, both you last year on communication and me suggesting you should talk about communication yes, this year. So absolutely. I'm very pleased that a number of the topics here have lined up without any <laughs> yeah. pre-test on this. Communication uh, and finance it seems is to be always, the, yeah, yeah, it's always, yeah, it's very important. Yeah, communication is always right. important. Well, geez, I was taking credit for matching them up and you. <laughs> um, with respect to communication, um, in, in the last year you talked about um, communication, improving communication or expanding communication with the town council and, um, and, and expanding communication with the community. Mm -hmm. As you did that, are we continuing to implement or do we think more expansion? Have we come up with new topics? So on the on the front as far as the cedar grove town council obviously we, we try to meet i think it's once or twice a year but we've also formed a, a subcommittee to talk about you know a pilot or potential pilot money and the group has yet to to meet so maybe if we made it a, a board goal we could try to make sure that happens mm -hmm. I mean, because we definitely have, I think, you know, in terms of, you know, open discourse with the Cedar Grove Town Council, we've definitely come a long way where I think we, oh, we yeah. have a, a really good relationship with our with our friends on the other side. So yes. I think, you know, obviously continuing that. Right. But then also, you know, the whole pilot conversation as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to sound ill-informed Ill Ill at the moment. Um, Verona Cedar Grove Times, do we have re regular information about the Board of Education and about the district in the Verona Cedar Grove Times? Our meetings are posted in the Cedar Grove Verona Times and There's on that. our website. <laughs> what do I say? Every meeting and all that. So, <laughs> right? That's more like, and tap yeah, into yeah. the, uh, the, the online, online. The online <laughs> one. Moved a fair bit into the digital platform. Yes, I was going to say. It's it's more it's more of a it's I would I would say the information communication has really shifted into a digital platform. That's really where the emphasis is now. Okay. Whether it's through emails, right, Twitter, really isn't Instagram, focusing as much on the schools or like I think it used to when it was kind of the only it, thing it, in town. Yeah, the that. newspapers right. drifted into a very broad. Right, a, very, not even a just broad version of, of everything, and, and not we're posting a lot more digitally than we are having to wait for. Oh, we do all the oh, time. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're actually getting. It's faster. Yeah. So I, that would probably be removing that that component yeah. definitely. Okay. And we still the uh, we still do coffee talks. And we're keeping or, that quarterly. Did we say? Or. You know, I, well, just offer an idea. Yeah. Um, I don't know that the coffee it's really, talk yeah. idea has gain much momentum, but what I'd be certainly willing to do is perhaps sticking with the format that we did last year and not call it a coffee talk, but rather have the local building principals announce my presence at an FSA or mm. APT meeting. But there's a crowd anyway. Yes. Right? Right. Yes. Each building once a quarter and yeah. first portion yes. of the meeting right. I'll be there. Uh, the coffee talk idea we did in the AMs and the PMs, and, and, you, we, and, you, and what the one year you tried it extensively. It was every it was every month the one year. Folks just have a lot on their plate, Please, so right. perhaps Fair we enough. just piggybacked onto the FSA. FSA. I think that's yeah, yeah. No, I think that has worked in the past. It sort of mm -hmm. built in audience. Yes, yep. Yep. announced my an yep. invitation to speak with me. You're bringing the coffee. So when you talk when you talk about emails, Facebook, Twitter, it's also shifted into Instagram because mm -hmm. all the. Um, 
because that is, you know, whether you like the digital medium or not, mm -hmm. that is where people do get information about what is going on in our uh, building principles and our the administration. Classrooms, even. Classrooms do it now as well, where it's, you're constantly being kept in form of what's going on in different programs as well. Okay. And, and even classrooms. Even classrooms, right. yeah. Sign up for your kids' classrooms. Classroom. Oh, that's right, yes. Right, get the alerts that way. Google Classroom, I guess. Google, yeah. Right? Yeah. And there's Mr. Featherman's. Uh, uh, superintendent. Uh, superintendent. The, uh, yes, the monthly well, the newsletter. newsletter. The newsletter, yeah, the superintendent's That's the newsletter. Word I'm for, yeah. The newsletter. It yeah. seems to be well received, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, there's certainly a plethora of ways that you're, we're pushing information out in all different platforms so that if you're partial to one, you, you can have get the, it. You can, you, that's right. You can get the information. You may not be one particular thing, but it's definitely there. Thank you. Uh, the last one is policy. Um, we had four goals last year. We just, you just identified four areas for goals this year. The fifth, the fifth item that we didn't touch on is policy. Um, if you're in a place where you need to add as a goal, reviewing your policy manual, addressing your policy manual, if that's not something that's in the cycle right now, then you wouldn't do it. But if that's something in the cycle. It's maintained on a regular basis. Regular basis. basis. Okay. I mean, so do yeah. we, yeah, we, it's regular. Our superintendent's always asking for policy meetings. Yeah. Evening, <laughs> so. It isn't something that we need to. Uh, yeah, it's nothing new. But. Okay. Do we do it on a regular basis? We miss anything? No, that's everything. Michael, thank you for helping bringing the and bringing last year's goals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we did that pretty. Nice. I think we did that in a pretty efficient way. I was you did. This was fun. <laughs> you see? <laughs> well, well, what a small, what a small. Good about so done. I will, I will, um, I'll put these in drafts, send them back to you. You can mark them up, and then we finalize them. And then you adopt them as your goals for the year. Great. Okay. So we should do all that, you know, before the next meeting. Awesome. Thank you. <coughs> Thank we you. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. You're welcome. You had your out, Francesca. I'm just that was it. <laughs> that was the window. This is mind Won't blowing stuff going twice. on here. <laughs> all right, moving on. All righty. From the Office of the Business Administrator and Board Secretary under minutes, can I have a motion for B1 and B2? To oh, anyone. Me. So moved. Sorry. <laughs> Second. B1 is a motion to approve the public executive minutes of September 24th. B2 is a motion to approve the Board Secretary certification to the Cedar Grove Board of Education pursuant to the code. Uh, any conversation about that? No. No, thank you. Alrighty. Uh, roll call, please. Mrs. DiChiara. Yes. Mrs. Miga. Yes. Mr. Splendoria. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Yes. Mrs. Dye. Yes. Under business, can I have a motion for B3 through B7? So moved. Second. B3 is a motion to approve a transportation jointer with Passaic Valley Board of Education. Uh, B4 is a motion to approve a transportation jointer with Passaic Valley Board of Education. Um, doesn't have a, okay, a student or anything, okay. Great. B5 is a motion to accept the generous donation from Memorial Middle School FSA in the amount listed to be used towards the purchase of supplies for the eSports Club. How cool is that, by the way? <laughs> B6 is a motion to approve the following parent transportation contract for the 1920 school year, and B7 is a motion to approve the subscription busing contracts with the parents of the student number listed in the amount listed. Any discussion? So can we just tell everyone what eSports is? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, I was on. I'm on. Well, You're full disclosure, on. I, I, I'm always on. 24-7. <laughs> exactly. on. Yes. I'm on. So we're excited about the eSports program. You, you've probably seen things, things on ESPN where these students, these young adults globally are comp competing in online electronic sports, mm -hmm. e-gaming, that's what they're doing. And so the idea was to approach the FSA for support for this idea, and they have uh, that's great. happily it's fantastic. thrown their, <coughs> their finances behind, and we're going to roll this thing out. And our kids are, <coughs> are jazzed up about it, 
And we're certainly thinking already now about the carryover into the high school, but mm -hmm. stay tuned for and that. And that could be technology on the board goal. Just yes. saying. So you're saying. Just wow. to keep it all. Look at that. Circle. And that's why I just thought it'd be great for, you know, if you didn't have no clothes. Absolutely. We're excited. And that's Mr. Mm -hmm. Potts who, uh, I think? Yeah, I think so. Right. I thought that's what I had heard at the FSA meeting. Yeah. Mr. Potts Mr. said. Mr. Potts is doing that. I didn't. Why did I not hear that? I don't we'll get know. back to you on Okay, we'll get back. Well, whoever is doing it, we really appreciate that. Absolutely. Because it's fantastic. So, anyway, and I think that was being offered just to eighth, eighth graders, grades. right? Nice. Due to the age stuff. Yeah. I tell you what, let's have, let's have them in here. Let's have them in here once we get great. this thing off the ground. I think that's a fantastic right. idea. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have them Demo? do a little. It's on. All right. That would be God. fantastic. We appreciate yeah. that. that would You're be great. all about it. Yes. I'm sure the FSA would love to help us with that. Thank you. All righty, any discussion? No. Nope. No. All righty. Roll call, please. So. Mrs. D. Chair. Uh, uh, yes, but I abstain from B5. Mrs. Miga. Yes. Mr. Splendoria. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Yes. Mrs. Dye. Yes. From the Office of the Superintendent of Schools under personnel, can I have a motion for S1 through S11? So moved. Second. S1 is a motion to affirm the Superintendent's report <coughs> on harassment, intimidation, and bullying from September 24th. S2 is a motion to approve Katrina Shabab High School School, I'm sorry, High School Student Assistant Counselor Maternity Leave Coverage um, for the amount listed. S3 is a motion to approve tuition reimbursement for the summer 2018, fall 18, and spring 19 semesters for the following employees. S4 is a motion to reimburse the following school-based volunteers for fingerprinting expenses. S5 is a motion to approve the following as school volunteers. S6 is a motion to retroactively approve the following personnel as Pathways Instructors for the 1920 school year. S7 is a motion to approve the following substitute nurses, nurse, I'm sorry, for the 1920 school year. S8 is a motion to authorize attendance at the following events. S9 is a motion to approve the following students for classroom observation. S10 is a motion to accept the resignation for the purpose of retirement from Jennifer Rosania, high school secretary to the athletic director, effective July 1st. And S11 is a motion to approve the following as substitute teachers, effective October 10th, 2019, at the rate listed. Any discussion? No. 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 Roll call, please. Mrs. DiChara. Yes. Mrs. Miga. Yes. Mr. Splendoria. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Yes. Mrs. Dye. Yes. Under curriculum, can I have a motion for S12 and S13? So moved. Second. S12 is a motion to approve David Coster to write curriculum for both STEM design and robotics two, and S13 is a motion to approve Michelle Rack to write curriculum for financial literacy. Any discussion? No. no. Roll call, please. Mrs. DiChara. Yes. Mrs. Miga. Yes. Mr. Splendoria. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Yes. Mrs. Dye. Yes. Under contracts, can I have a motion for S14 and S15? So moved. Second. S14 is a motion to approve the special education tuition contract in the amount listed to, um, to receive a student from Glenridge Board of Ed. And S15 is a motion to approve the following contracts for special education students as recommended by the Director of Special Services for the 1920 school year. Any discussion? No. no. Roll call, please. Mrs. DiChara. Yes. Mrs. Miga. Yes. Mr. Splendoria. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Yes. Mrs. Dye. Yes. The meeting is open to the public for comments on items on or off the agenda. None. All righty. Announcement of future meetings, October 29th, the end of October already. Jeez. What's up with that? Uh, North End Media Center here, same place and time. And then November 12th, same place and same time. Any further comments? No? No. 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 All right. Well, we're taking it on the road in a couple of weeks. We're going down to school boards, and we're all going yep. this year, which is very exciting. Yes. yes. Right? Yes. We're going to learn, learn a lot. Learn a lot. And <laughs> hang out with our fellow board members from across the state and... It's one of the great things that we've been doing over the past uh, the past three years. It is, is that three years now, right? Three years now is right. that this board has decided that we really want to participate in the school boards and go to the workshops and the various mm -hmm. seminars yeah. that they have. And it's really educational because you're able to see what other schools are doing, what are their best practices, and that's how we even did the, the Ed Foundation yep. threw it down there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And it makes us feel pretty good about ourselves, too, sometimes. <laughs> yes, yes, it does. Yes. Pretty good compared to some other places. So, yes. yes. You know? But, no, it really is educational. And, you know, some of the stuff you get out of there is actually really, it's really good. It yeah. is. So I appreciate going. So I look forward Absolutely. to all of that. Yeah. All right. 
If there's nothing further, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Mrs. Dichara. Yes. Mr. Mrs. Miga. Yes. Mr. Splendoria. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Yes. Mrs. Dye. Yes. The meeting is over. Have a good night, everybody.